Did, did you listen to Jeff, Jeff and, and Professor, Professor Hemo in the morning? morning? Here's what you missed. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So Steve, yes, my sir. God, where do we begin? Where do we begin? Because you know, when it comes to corruption, yes. I think we take the cake here. <laughs> yes. Another day, another scandal. Now yes. these dams, a mm -hmm. hundred billion shillings plus worth of dams. And it could be even more. Yes. It could be even more. You need to know you. You need to marry the I mean, Steve, huh? what, what's going on, man? What's going on? Well, I can tell you, Jeff, as a government assessment, this is hardly surprising. Why? Because I've told you that corruption is best fought at the ballot. Oh. But government is being organized. You have to elect people who are as close to transparency as they can get. Then that makes it easier for accountability. And in the second level, corruption is best fought through political accountability. I am a lawyer, I, do, I go to court. Even now after this, I'm gonna to go to court. Corruption is not fought in courts the way it has been, the way we have been made to believe. Judicial process has a very limited chance in documenting or detailing success rate in terms of framing the own craft. Corruption is best fought at the ballot, in the second place, corruption is fought through political accountability. The fact that the president is unable to fire people, I mean, should indicate something that they, 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 we are high on rhetoric, but low on action. Right, because we even hear there are up to six CSs. Yes. Up to six who are being implicated, and yet that uh, reshuffle we had heard about in December. Mm -hmm. It's still but on the rhetoric. It's still a rumor. <laughs> Yeah. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, you see also what, what happens is this. Corruption is also a question of perception. Once people lose confidence in you, you ought to vacate that public office. What does the law say? You hold state office, Article 73, in trust. It's a public office held in trust. If people lose trust in you because they perceive you to have done something that may have caused the nation to lose money, you're looking at it tearing down. For instance, the yeah. latest scandal, uh -huh. where one Italian company yeah. was awarded tenders, you know, to, the, to build dams, and it turns out that this company is bankrupt. In Italy, in, in, in now, <laughs> and they've got three now, tenders here. Yes. Now, in a perfect constitutional setting, the persons responsible ought to have resigned without waiting to be fired. And in the second, sec, in, the, in the second instance, the persons responsible ought to have been fired, if only for the political accountability. The criminal culpability, and I think Kenyans have, have yet to understand the difference between political accountability and criminal culpability. Political accountability simply means the public is desperate for action. They have reason to believe public money has been lost. There is someone who has been in charge. That person slept on the job. He yes. ought to go. That is not to say that in a judicial process he will be found guilty. The constitution sets a very low threshold as low as a perception of gross misconduct. Gross misconduct need not to be a criminal finding. I think insofar as the president is unable to fire these people, corruption and perception of corruption will continue to deepen in the state. Mm. So he needs to take action, stern and swift action, if he's, if, if he's able to regain the public confidence, one, on the perception of the own corruption, mm -hmm. and two, on the real war on corruption. Okay. Judicial mm -hmm. angle, in terms of prosecution of cases, you know when, when you're in court, the, this word, war on graft, it's a buzzword. It's not a legal term. Mm -hmm. When you're in court, there is nothing like war on graft. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to point which provision of the law has been breached, which offense has been committed, mm -hmm. and you have to patiently and painstakingly establish your case. And it's not possible to rush the judiciary and say, we want these cases concluded within three months or, three or six months because the public is anxious for action. Because the judicial process has internal checks and balances. If a, a ruling must be made on that. And if a ruling is not in my favor, I'll appeal that ruling on that limited question before we can come back and proceed with the case. So the judicial process is not an effective way of combating graft. Judicial process is a, is a process for establishing the criminal culpability for purposes of one, securing a conviction, and two, as the law says, refunding or repaying what you owe, what you stole twice the amount. That's what the law says. That if you are guilty, if you are found guilty of a corrupt act, or maybe you've stolen public funds, 
you will not only be jailed, but you'll be asked to refund twice the amount that is stolen. And none of that happens, Steve. Yes. None of it. Even freezing of assets. Should you want to confiscate? Chicken get mutu alishikwa, ata alitoka. Ulaya. Ata alitoka. They sentenced the person there. Yes. Served his three years. Yes. Came out. Last week. Yet to hapa. Tunayedelea. Painstakingly. Waiting. And it's the Jeff. I mean, uh, uh, this, if you're talking about the war on graft, which I've said is just a buzzword, mm -hmm. you must frame it right. The war in court, the war on graft must be fought dispassionately, which means you must have a watertight case. If you rush to charge people on suspicion that they have stolen public funds, and then you have you 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 you, you experience hurdles in some of establishing a case, of course you lose it. I think the success and any lawyer, any litigation lawyer knows that the success of your case in court is at the level of preparation. Have you you have seen, for instance, by every example, Corey just getting released? Yeah. Yes. You know, yes. at the time of his arrest, yeah. the public was made to believe that this is the person most culpable. Correct. You know, he killed mm -hmm. his wife. Yeah. Yeah. And for four weeks, the perception that he killed his wife was so high and was sustained. Mm -hmm. A dispassionate, objective review of the evidence on record leads to a completely different conclusion. Mm. I want to ask the public, that is the same way graft cases are. If you have a chaotic approach to work, that you are dealing more with public, with, with the, maintaining the public perception that you are fighting graft, the way to preserve public perception on the one graft is to fire people. I mean, wow. first of all, you people, the voters, you failed in your duty to put in a government and governors and elected leaders who can be held accountable, who already believe in the constitution. I say that this, I hope there's the time probably to look at the constitution mm -hmm. and the quest to amend it, which I've always rejected. Mm -hmm. And the second thing I've always rejected, even, it's even this handshake itself, I'm not an enthusiastic believer in the handshake per se. Oh. But the, the short answer is this, the way we are approaching governance, we are approaching, we are being governed based on rumors and guess what? <laughs> Money is, money is thought to have been lost. It has been reported in the media. Issue a stern warning. Action will be taken. Yeah. That action, the kind of action that the people want to see, which can stem the tide of the, the, the corruption tide, is firing people, you know, suspending them, so that investigations can be done while they are out of the office. I mean, the Constitution recognizes that the president is the head of state and government, which means, and his is there is mandated to direct functions of ministries and departments. You know, that's his exclusive function. It is not beyond the president to direct that so and so. If you are a political appointee, the principal secretary, yes. the cabinet secretary, these are the people that take political responsibility or political accountability. Political accountability means the president will say money has been lost. A decision which upon review is not consistent with your mandate in your office, a decision that falsifies the public trust. Has, you, you took a decision that in effect undermines public trust in your office. I am not saying that you're guilty, but I'm saying that you must vacate that office if I'm to preserve the public confidence that I'm really waging the world graft. And yet, resignation is a foreign word in Kenya. Mm -hmm. It's foreign. <laughs> who resigns? <laughs> who, who does that, Steve? <laughs> I mean, in Kenya, you see, you see the problem is this. The struggle to be in public offices is not necessarily inspired by the desire of the quest for service delivery. Uh -huh. So the idea that you can resign when you're adversely mentioned is non-existent. Yeah. And I'm saying that in terms of theory, the way you understand governance in a perfect constitutional setting, there's a serious disjunction, a serious difference between governance as framed in law and governance as practiced in reality. Mm -hmm. Governance as framed in law means if there is a if if there is if there is an instance where the public feel you have done something that it doesn't matter how competent you are, you step aside. It's a logical consequence. Yeah. I mean, even in our families, we are told in case of a fight with your wife or whatever, the only way to deal with that, first of all, is to calm down, maybe walk out, come back when things are cooler, mm -hmm. or say sorry to this. I mean, if you're being accused and you're staying put. That's a very defiant and rebellious attitude. It's not consistent with public service. I mean, they they say in Kiswahili, sequel lazima. You don't need to be in that office by always. But our, our philosophy as, as, as a country is that the more you are accused, the more you stay there. And you know why? Because of the problem. The problem in this country 
it's not even these elected leaders, this public official. The problem in this country in terms of governance is what I've always called ethnic solidarity. Everybody knows if you're adversely mentioned, yeah. you can easily mobilize support and empathy from your community yeah. and they'll tell you, stay put. Just stay put. Otherwise, if there was a sense of shame, a sense of responsibility, yeah. the moment you're adversely mentioned, it, I mean, you've seen in the West, people stepping aside for arriving late yes. for a parliamentary session. Yes. You know, people have stepped aside even in the UK government for holding positions that are at variance with what the Prime Minister is saying. Correct. Correct. I mean, yet, you can, you can just see the disjunction. It means that Kenya has not yet matured to the, in the manner in which the Constitution had hoped to inspire. Yeah, I think you just nailed it, Steve. Mm -hmm. You said we have no mm -hmm. shame. Mm -hmm. We are shameless. Yes. Hey. Shameless. Come on, we're going to bunge and alala the whole session. The, what do you mean? The whole four years. Four, four years. Four. The Hawaii on here. Unbelievable, Steve. And now it's gone to the counties. Samburu yes. County last week. Oh, Allegedly yes. 2 billion shillings. Yes. 2 billion. That's one county. Yes. Uh, fact is this. I have already said we can expect more corruption scandals from fall. There's a lot that is going on which has not been reported. And a lot is going to go, is going to happen without an abetted. Mm. Why? Because of it, you can see the, from the founding philosophy, the, mm. the organizing philosophy of governance, everybody who is, an, who, is in a, who is in public office, they are there. The philosophy that underlies their performance there is that philosophy, we, everybody wants to be co opted into the club of resource managers mm. for personal aggrandizement, personal benefit. Yeah. I mean, it's unlikely that you can find a governor who is driven by passion for public service, which is what the constitution says that public office is, to, is supposed to be applied to the benefit of the, of the citizens. Mm -hmm. But when you see Samburu, one of the marginalized counties, the governor, the speaker, and people around, around this government pilfering a lot of public resources and getting wealth and accumulating wealth. They do so knowing too well that the systems of accountability are so weak. And I'm not talking about judicial accountability. Judiciary is being overburdened. And if Kenyans don't want to believe it, that's fine. I mean, we have already pointed out, you will never succeed in fighting graft by prosecuting cases. You won't. The way to get the governor out, in Samburu, for instance, you have a million, a million man march to his office every day. How long will it take before the governor resigns? Yeah. The MCAs are up in arms. Yeah. But you see, if an idea say this, if you go down on the ground, the people who are supposed to be the intended beneficiaries of this money that has been looted will be speaking in harsh tones. I mean, see Mutwa Kwanza, Ata Mejenga Tuapa, Hoteli Kwapa, I mean, that perception is real. I mean, these people, politicians have known that they can manipulate the masses. And because they can manipulate the, person, the masses, there's this smash and break kind of theft. I mean, it's, it's just so shocking that, you know, if you are a visitor in this country and you are to start a, a casual perusal of our constitution, you'd imagine that in terms of governance, you have the perfect setting. But in reality, people continue to lose. And I say, corruption is deeper in the counties than it can ever get in the national government. Yeah. And you can see that the, the government in waiting, the political opposition, and the government of the day are all united. That's, that's the same sides of the coin. Mm -hmm. You cannot condemn corruption. There are, I've seen on um, Salem Davadi condemning and calling out corruption in the national government, but you cannot hold to account your own county where your own party members, you know, are governors, you know, they are the speakers. I mean, Samburu, I, I think Samburu is an odium county. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. just like other counties like Sia, where I come from. Yeah. These are these odium counties, for instance, and even Jubilee counties. Nobody's commenting on the deepening and widening corruption in those areas. Why? Because it's not convenient politically. It's not convenient. Yeah. And perhaps also because the people who are supposed to call out corruption are also beneficiaries in one way or another. So what it means is this: if this country is to move forward. 
Kenyans must reach a level where they can say enough is enough. Tell me something, Steve. If Mudavadi had been part of the handshake, mm -hmm. would he be speaking like he's speaking? No. You see, he's a... Uh, Mudavadi, Mudavadi is a man of unknown philosophy. I mean, I mean, in terms of, in, in terms of taking a firm and stable stand. Yes. I'm not talking about Mudavadi as a, as a person. The political elite. Yeah. I mean, there's some elite consensus that the way you can the way you can deal with corruption is to manage it. I mean, let's not be naive to think that the political elite are genuinely committed to fighting craft. Even the president appears that he can only manage it by strong rhetoric. He is yet to he is yet to act firmly in a manner that can send a far, and he's in the his second term. You know, he's going to home. He's going home. Yeah. After this term, the president is going home. He's not going to be recycled. In law, he's not permitted to be recycled in any way or format, unless they want to continue deepening the crisis of governance and our constitution. This would be a very sad thing. Yeah. This is the time he ought to act a tough because there's very little to lose. He's not seeking re-election, but he's yet to march his firm rhetoric with some action so that people can see that there's a clear departure. The political elite are interested in maintaining public, public or national tranquility. Let, if people start complaining or a corruption scandal start emerging, let us send strong statement to assuage the public that something is going to be done. Then sooner or later, it will be back the default. Our default setting in this country is that looting, wastage, pilferage, theft. That is the order of the day. So that even if there's some quiet moment, you can only imagine that after some time, there's going to be another revelation of a mega scandal. Yeah. Yes, yeah. In this other county, mm -hmm. that is where the problem is. The quiet before the storm. That's it. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. Kuna kitu ina chorwa. Oh, <laughs> man, my man. God. I mean, and, uh, Professor, uh, what were you saying? Uh, in, uh, in our budget, which is what, 3 trillion? 3 trillion. We lose 400 billion every year. 400 billion. Yes? That's like 12%, if not yeah. more. And, yeah. and before to get it further, to na be to 2020. That is 10 thicker super highways every year. Mama, you know that you Mama Lucy, me a kid to that seven billion. Hey, you know that you know county. Steve, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Every year, and there <laughs> seems to be no end in sight. There's no light at the end of the tunnel here, Steve. I mean, that's how it's going to be until you reach a level where you can act differently. The people that can act differently, I mean, there are ways to innovate within the law. Mm. There are ways, I'm not talking about ways that disrupt and sabotage government. I'm talking about ways that are permitted within the law. If Kenyans are tired, you know, conversations in boardroom, there's a saying in the West mm. that keep the nigger running. Yes. As long as they can hold press conferences, mm -hmm. as long as they can do TV shows, yes. radio just condemning corruption, yeah. and no real action is being taken that can pile pressure. I mean, just give them the space mm. to pontificate. Give them the space to lament. That's all. If they can ventilate, they probably will feel better after complaining. So just keep the nigger running. <laughs> but if the nigger stopped running yeah. and demanded action yes. and said, listen, the people of Samburu will know no peace. We are not going to go, go to work. The professionals are not going to go to, to go to work. The nurses are not going to work. Mm -hmm. The lawyers are not going to court. Mm -hmm. Everyone, the teachers are not going to school. They are demanding that the governor resigns. How long can it take? How long, How long can it take? Exactly. I mean, a peaceful assembly. Yeah. Just waving white handkerchiefs. How long can it take? And yet, Steve. He would mm -hmm. resign immediately. Much, of course. He would have to. But he knows. Even if these scandals are, are, are imagined in the media, mm -hmm. there probably be some lawyer somewhere talking on Hot 96, mm -hmm. telling us how there's a disjunction between the law and, 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 and the reality of that law. <laughs> and then after that, yeah. they play some cool music. <laughs> show. Keep the nigga running. <laughs> I think that is our cue to play some cool music. <laughs> but before we do that, Steve, at the same time, the, the, there's a disjoint. Because if you, God forbid, steal a chicken mm -hmm. and you are caught, Danny, Danny, Danny. You're getting 20 years. Aye. You steal the, a chicken. The, the court is very clear on that. Let me even rephrase that. Yeah. Yeah. If you listen to me carefully, everything boils back to manage. How much are you willing to protect a chicken thief as an ordinary Kenyan? Probably no. 
Because the chicken that has been stolen is yours. You feel the pain right there at your doorstep. You want him lynched. Right you want there. action taken right there. He yeah. doesn't have political protection. Mm -hmm. But your man in Nairobi, who has come and lied to you that I'm organizing governance or government mm -hmm. on your behalf in the village, mm -hmm. you want him protected because you don't, you know, Kenyans have not have yet to internalize that when you're paying taxes, it is your money and your resources that is being stolen and pilfered. You will somehow imagine that if it's your person in political office and is stealing public funds, that the, that the section of the, of, the, of, the, of the taxes being stolen belongs to the other people. Yeah. And therefore he's stealing from them and bringing to, he's stealing your money. And he's not bringing it to you. He's taking it to his cronies. I mean, there's something called horizontal solidarity. Yeah. That is what is lacking. In the chicken thief, yes. horizontal solidarity is so strong. Well, like, if I don't act now, the next chicken to be stolen will be mine. <laughs> yeah. So there's that solidarity at the lower level, mm -hmm. running across, you know. Yeah. At the national level, that so horizontal solidarity is lacking. I mean, voters, taxpayers, poor people cannot unite, you know, across ethnic divides and say, no, 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 no. With the rulers as against the ruled. Mm -hmm. And the rulers are mismanaging the country. So we want to come together and demand some action. I mean, if people were building solidar uh, horizontal solidarity, there'd be more resignations, there'd be less corruption, there'd be more accountability. But you see, at the national level, horizontal solidarity is lacking. What we have is ethnic solidarity. So that you're probably asking, why is ESCC targeting our government? Mm. I mean, it's ours. Mm. It's ours. Yeah. We have not complained. Mm. We know what this government has done for us. I mean, even the hotel is just right here. Mm. Oh. Why? 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 Why can't you, why can't you deal with corruption? There's Italian dam. Mm. Why can't you deal with Italian dam first? Why is it prioritizing that? I would not be surprised if that kind of conversation is going down on the ground because the people feel that the money that is being stolen in the account, since it has come from treasury, it's not their money. You know. And since it was meant, even if it was meant for public service delivery, yeah. it's not there, it was not going to be, it's not going to benefit them directly as individuals. That's why the public go against the throne. The chicken thief steals from the neighbor. And the other neighbor sees that the other person having been stolen from mm -hmm. his chicken is going to be at risk. That's why even if he can't be taken to court, he'll be lynched. Mm -hmm. And that's why if he's taken to court, the witnesses will be there. Plus, also the chicken thief, the case against it is a very simple case. You know, establishing a complex case requires massive organizational capacity. You must identify witnesses, you must cite the law correctly, and these are people that also have the capacity to hire best legal counsels who will see through. You know, you know, you know they actually say that in terms of criminal defense, the mind of a criminal defense lawyer is not to require a confession from a client. The mind of a criminal defense lawyer is to ensure that he who accuses establishes. Because we say no one is to accuse himself except before the Lord. So if somebody if, if somebody is charged of an offense and he has an attorney to go and act in, in his defense, what the attorney is going to do is to make sure that since you've accused this person, you know he's not gonna get convicted because he issued a press statement on Twitter and there's massive reaction right. and support. Yeah. Here we're going to check, did you arrest on a Thursday, did you arrest on a Friday? If you arrested on a Thursday and you arrest on a Monday, you've already crossed the 24-hour threshold. There'll be a fierce legal battle on that question alone, which could take six months. Oh. <laughs> you get that has to be settled. Oh. Did you extract the evidence in the proper way? Because ordinarily, that's what we battle with. So don't just tell us because you brought a high-profile case and you, in terms of social mainstreaming, it's already there, it's already... We must, here, the lawyer will, will make sure that the procedural aspects of the case are followed to the letter. If you vacate or revisit any part of that procedural requirement, that will be a mini battle within the mini case, within the mega case, <laughs> and the case will drag on and drag on. <laughs> the chicken thief is probably going without legal representation. Yes. Correct, correct. Otherwise, if you had a lawyer, probably the case would take longer than this case. <laughs> or, or as most of the would say, Kwani person ya mamako. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to take a break, come back and talk about the constitution you were referring to Ooh, there, Steve. Should there be a referendum? Mm -hmm. Who will it benefit? Uh, well, I mean, wh who's going to pay for it? Well, yes. And what are the questions Good you need? Yes. Yeah, what yeah. are the questions in it? Yes. By the way, in the meantime, uh -huh. back at the Oscars in Hollywood, uh -huh. best actor in a leading role 
Rami Malek of Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh, That's Freddie right. Mercury of Queen. Yes. I'm gonna have to tell you that story in the next yes. hour. Uh, on the story a day. Kabisa. Rami Malek gets the best, the leading actor. Uh, Oscar uh -huh. for Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh -huh. Take a break, come back. Steve Okola is uh -huh. live in the studio and he's waxing lyrical. Waxing! <laughs> <laughs> so alive. Yeah? Waxing lyrical this morning <laughs> on the hottest breakfast show in all of Africa. We are tackling issues. Folks. Yes. Corruption, mm -hmm. forget about it. Huh? We have lost that war. We gave up Kitambo. Kitambo. To the Wachana now. And yet, yet before hmm? you transition from that, let me yes. just tell something what I was telling you. Oh. Go on. To be sure, Kenyans support corruption. Forget this aggressive accountability posture. Mm. If Kenyans don't support corruption, they would not be electing corrupt leaders. Mm -hmm. yep. They would not be looking for, uh, for favors. Yes. In all public offices, Kenyans are always looking for favors. The son has done well, Malim. My son scored 413. Yeah, Mr. Fatih came out. Ah, he was a hero of this school. I don't think he, he'd be so demoralized. Mr. I mean, if everybody who got 413 and above yes. was trooping to Alliance Boys, Alliance High School, yeah. there'll be there'll be no learning going on. Yeah. No. But Kenyans do that. Kenyans fight back to protect their own mm -hmm. when their own are scandalized. So, in essence, the war on corruption as a collective, as as a nation. We have an aggressive posture, so we want action, but uh, the reality is that the Kenyan voter is yet to change his mindset. And yet there's mm -hmm. a country right next door to us, mm -hmm. a tiny little and country uh -huh. called Rwanda. Mm -hmm. yes. Steve, if you ever thought of, be, of, of engaging corruption in Rwanda, I mean, even the thought yeah. is, 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 you know, you can't even think about it. Yeah? You can't even think about it. And why is it the mindset of the people there it's, first of all, it's a question of the mindset of the people uh -huh. and the leadership. You see, why, why are people saying that President Uru Kenyatta, being in his second term, he should be more bold to take firm action? It is because they, and they, they recognize the underlying politics that in your first term, you probably need votes to be elected in the second term. Yes. Yes. You take stern action against a political kingpin, you know, his people are likely to see you as sabotaging their interests, mm. whether you are acting in the best interest of the, the overall best interest of the nation. They won't see that. So the people must alter their mindset fast. By the way, tweets are coming in thick and fast. Mm -hmm. Kim Nga teaches Jeff Salimia Wakili Sana. Yes. He has taken my attention. I'm listening keenly as I nod my head up and down in everything he says. I'm loving the conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mona. Philip Kiprotich and the dam in El Geo Marquet is yes. called Talal Dam. Yes. I was surprised to hear the contractors bankrupt at T63 billion. I mean, we <laughs> throw around these numbers like they're chump Imagine. change, Steve. B. B. That's what we're talking about. Say you give me money, but million we go here. Where is on the card? What are you doing in a million? It's ridiculous. We have devolved corruption. And when you say government. no one's doing anything about it, Steve, mm -hmm. and, and everyone's uh, looking the other way, does that mean the handshake that happened nearly a year ago, mm -hmm. March 9th, 2018, has that has that been disappointing to you in terms of governance? I have said that I'm not an enthusiastic supporter of the handshake. Well, you could say that the handshake has beneficial aspects, mm -hmm. national tranquility, but that's borrowed peace. That's borrowed peace. The philosophy that underlies the handshake is unknown and remains unexplained. The handshake happened on the platform of a false swearing in, mm -hmm. On the platform of gross abuse of human rights. Mm -hmm. Listen, the thing is this: this the author of the handshake ought to have been prefaced by some honest admissions by the two principles. The honourable uh, Relo uh, Ding ought to have admitted, and I've said this: he ought to have admitted that swearing in, parallel running a parallel swearing in, it doesn't matter they call it mock swearing in or whatever. Right on the heels of a Supreme Court finding, because in terms of our, in terms of our hierarchical order, the judiciary ranks up in terms of interpretation of the Constitution finality. You can debate for improvement, you can critique a judgment, but you can't displace it. I mean, if you're in a rule of law country, that's just how, it, how, how things are. Mm -hmm. 
you can't do a swearing in saying you don't recognize. Just whether, whether you want to explain it as a political transaction, you know, creating, you know, creating some uh, audible space to negotiate, whatever. Mm -hmm. But the fact is this, in terms of interpretation, once there's a finding that this is the person validly elected, you can, you can find other ways of innovating within the law. You can do a parallel swearing in, because that undermines the overall infrastructure of the law as you know it. Mm -hmm. Number two, so that, that, that needed to, to be, the handshake needed to have been prefaced with some apology on that, mm -hmm. and an assurance that that will never happen. That is lacking. On the part of President Uhuru Kenyatta, in terms of harnessing low-hanging fruits, police brutality has deepened, and there's no justification why you should kill innocent protesters, mm -hmm. why you should use excessive force. Mm -hmm. There ought to have been an admission that during the post-election period, police responded to protest with excessive force, and that that will never happen again. The police will innovate within those challenges and find ways of dealing with protesters using as minimum force as possible. Yes. That wasn't done. Uh -huh. uh -huh. It was just an abrupt maneuver. I see the handshake as a transactional arrangement designed uh -huh. to allow the president complete his term. Uh -huh. Designed to allow Kenyans enjoy, but you know, you are enjoying peace that has a shelf life. Yeah. There's no assurance uh -huh. that in 2022, there will not be need for another handshake. Right. Or oh, you know, oh, more you know, violence. Mm -hmm. More violence. You see, the rhetoric. Rhetoric saying that we are uniting the country. Everybody knows that's just rhetoric. There is no real action yeah. that is being moved, that moves us as a country that we can say, well, now we have consolidated our experiences, documented our mistakes, and now we are better equipped moving forward. Mm -hmm. And the kind of learning that you've done, in fact, the lesson that Kenyans must learn, I have always encouraged Kenyans not to trust politicians. Politicians can build consensus quickly, what I call elite consensus, mm -hmm. quickly, yes. and leave you wondering what happened. <laughs> oh, yeah, we do that all the time. <laughs> we what wonder. happened? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> and you, you are, now you, are, you have to alter your position and get, oh. that's why Miguna is stranded. Yeah. Out there. Yeah. Yes. It's easy to accept that he has been outsmarted and people have moved. Yeah. I think Kenyans must reduce reliance on politicians and try to strengthen and build resilience around institutions. So will there be a referendum, Steve? Will there be one? Again, I'm opposed to the referendum for the sake of it. First of all, for legal and practical reasons. For political reasons, you may support it because the way politicians have framed it. Mm -hmm. But for legal reasons, first of all, there cannot be a debate on referendum without a question. The Constitution says a question must be framed. Mm -hmm. So if you ask me, do you support referendum or not? Where's the question? Yeah. Yeah, Where's the question? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because the pathway to a referendum is ordained by law. Mm -hmm. Whoever wants seeks a referendum, what they are trying to do is to call baloney, trying to assess public perception. Corner mm -hmm. you to a position where when the question pops up, you can't say no. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you've already been whipped. <laughs> Ideally, in a perfect, that is the manipulative reading of the law. What the politician ought to do, if you're bold enough, you sit in a boardroom, you imagine the referendum question, then you say, okay, I want this. Kenyans would reject it. But first of all, you try to create an environment that conditions the people to support an idea that will come later. Yeah. The referendum question probably has been framed somewhere. Yes. And the political elite, and what I see, there's some elite consensus uh -huh. that a referendum, must, a referendum will happen if politicians want it to happen. But I will reject it because it depends on me as a Kenyan to reject it. So if the rest of Kenyans want to support, that's fine. That's fine. But I shall have done my part. There cannot be a referendum without an, a comprehensive legal audit of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Where has the Constitution failed us? Mm -hmm. But even before we audit the Constitution, Jeff, are we sure, rather, can we say with certainty and evidence that the Constitution has failed us? Or is it the political elite that has failed us? I mean, we have to be honest. Insofar as I see it, the greatest sabotage to our governance is not the Constitution. So don't corner us with how the Constitution is unable to give you inclusive government. First of all, tell us how politicians have sabotaged government and the Constitution. Let us have some honest admission that we're yet to disinherit the culture of bad manners. We don't have a shared sense of decency. We don't have a shared sense of shame. 
everybody is still corrupted in the old philosophy that if you are in government mm -hmm. or when you're supposed to be in government, supposed to benefit you in the yes. few cronies. Even if you alter the constitution a thousand times, it will never work. Correct. That's number one. Number two, and most importantly, altering the constitution to advance or to deepen inclusivity is a false narrative. And I've said inclusion as being framed by the political elite is not the kind of inclusion the constitution has designed or hoped to achieve. Inclusion for the politician is creating of positions so that they don't stay in the cold. I mean, to Kenyans, are, like to went to Kenyans are jobless. A lot of Kenyans are jobless. <laughs> yeah. You know, and when you see when you see these way stories, mm -hmm. somebody creates a job quickly, you know, for that yes. man who yes. sneaked his child, attempted to sneak his child out. Yes. That's a kind of disparation facing Kenyans. Well, here's, yeah. another, here's another disparation, Steve. Mm -hmm. Education C as Amina Mohammed says, yes. help defaulters will be arrested. Police are going to shake your hand. Let's just finalize this question with Russo that for purposes of documenting where the challenge is lying. Yes. The struggle to amend the constitution is a struggle to expand the executive. Yeah. That's the reality. <laughs> Do Kenyans want that? Because you're talking about inclusion, inclusion has already been framed in the constitution. Persons with disabilities, marginalized communities, marginalized groups, women. I mean, if you look at the overall design of the, the constitution is organized around the ideology of inclusion. In a perfect setting, the cabinet should observe the two-third gender principle. Parliament should observe the two-third gender principle. Yeah. Appointment of public service in the public service should be based on merit and balancing the various the, the, the national diversity as we have it. Yeah. Have we done that? No, have we yeah. really done that? No. You know, but we are struggling to expand the executive in the name of inclusion. So I guess that what is happening as in the call for referendum is not a call to maintain or deepen this parcel of resources the counties. Because that can happen. You don't need a referendum to send more monies in the counties. The constitution has set a minimum threshold, 15%. You can agree by good practice. Over 50 years, we can say over 50 years, we've been disbursing consistently about 20 or 30 or 40%. Then we will amend the constitution to reflect that as a matter of course. We don't need to corner the national government by raising the threshold. So discussion on referendum, as it is now, nothing has crystallized. I reject it in total, but I know that it's being framed to benefit a few political leaders. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. As as they want. That's going to help. Yeah. To, uh, insofar as help is concerned, mm -hmm. I think, you know, this government has a reputation for laziness. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, mean, I mean, if you want to vacate common sense, this is not how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you want to forget common, common sense. sense. Hey. <laughs> Help defaulters. I mean, this is a civil dispute. Some monies were advanced to you. You are in employment. You have to have refunded that money so that you can benefit the next person. You have refused to do so. Help to do a background check. Is Jeff a defaulter? Does he have the capacity to repay? Has he refused to repay? Then you say, we're going to sue Jeff in the civil court. Okay. Then orders are extracted compelling you to pay. If you fail to pay, then you'll be committed to civil, uh, to civil jail. There is nowhere in this arrangement of debt recovery that the police will be involved. I mean, even if you wanted to, to demoralize Kenyans with their inability to think, this is not how to do it. No. <laughs> so in short, yes. <laughs> police have no role under our legal setting in terms of helping the government recover health. And then some of these poor students, they see the billions being stolen. Yes. And my few thousand is being demanded. Well, that, that conversation itself yeah. is not, I mean, that, that's a wrong framing. Kenyans who are in employment and are able to repay help must repay it. To say that you can't repay help because other people are stealing, mm. it reflects the same philosophy that the politicians have been, have been exploiting. Why targeting us? When there are other angles you can also look at. Sure. Are we the only people who are corrupt? Steve, this is, you know. Finally, before we uh, before the top of the hour, I have to ask you about this Somalia conundrum. Yes. Uh, Kenya and Somalia in a tiff over something like nine hundred eighty yes. thousand acres of land in the Indian Ocean. Mm -hmm. Each country says be the borderline belongs to wherever it is that they think it belongs to. <laughs> yes. But obviously, these oil blocks have either been sold in advance uh -huh. or are in the process of being sold or were trying to be sold, but there are people profiting from this. 
I think in this, um, in terms of the diplomatic role between Kenya and Somalia, Somalia is not only biting more than it can chew, but it's also biting the finger that, that feeds it. It's a critical error in judgment on their part to escalate the tension when the matter is outstanding, pending in court. Kenya has been a strong ally. Yeah, we have supported them. Our troops are there. I think if there was a deterioration in terms of diplomatic relations, the people that stand to lose is not Kenya. That's number one. Kenya will put a fierce legal battle and will defend our territorial integrity to the hilt. But meanwhile, in terms of deterioration of relationship, Kenya will lose nothing. In fact, Kenya is already overburdened by the huge number of Somali refugees in this country. Kenya is already overburdened by we are having to send our troops abroad to secure a nation, and that because, because of infiltration of, of Al Shabaab, we have had to keep our, our troops in Somalia. If Somalia does not withdraw that statement and, with, and stop halt, the post, you know, by the time government comes out and announces that we are telling Kenyans that there are plans to sell oil blocks, for instance, yes. in the disputed, of course they know what they're saying. You don't just rise one morning and come up with sensational news that can create diplomatic role. You surely must have seen this evidence, this intelligence that speaks to that. And I think, as I've said, that's a critical error in judgment that can only harm Somalia and not Kenya in the long run. Wow. wow. Tweets coming in thick and fast. Mm -hmm. Mukiai says, yes. if you want to vacate common sense, yes. <laughs> they made. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh, Mona, Dicky Muremi. Yeah. Indeed, ethnic solidarity is the worst enemy mm -hmm. to fighting against corruption. Yeah. Bad governance. John Gurugwe of mm. way in Doha, Qatar, yeah. says, Wakili spitting so much <coughs> sense and wisdom until or unless every Monanji realizes that the government and leaders do not do us a favor mm -hmm. by offering services, then we will be in this mess forever. <sighs> forever. Huh? Steve, we literally have three minutes to go to the top of the hour. Closing thoughts going forward. Closing thoughts. I think Kenyans must know what goes on in the mind of the political elite. Mm. Number one, for the political elite, the law is not the law until the law matches their political desires. So the law will be manipulated, mm -hmm. the constitution will be antagonized until they get what they want. It is never about what the people want until the people begin to organize differently. And when I say organizing differently means abandoning the political elite as a ruling class. And saying that, listen, let us identify the issues that affect both of us across ethnic divides. Mm -hmm. I reject in total ethnic mobilization, ethnic solidarity, because that is what is being exploited and that is what is now manifesting in terms of bad governance. It is reducing our ability to demand accountability. Mm -hmm. Let us organize differently. Let people who are aggrieved by the way they are being governed come out of their studios, hotels, talk shows, whatever, and be on the streets, peaceful assembly, let's say in Samburu, every day demand, you know, unless you act differently, you'll not be able to achieve different results. That goes to the, to the voter, the 190. To the president, because Article, Article 131 of the Constitution designates the president as the head of state and government. Corruption is best fought at the ballot. Kenyans elected you because they imagined as it should be, that you are closer to implementing the constitution in the manner in which it was intended. Can you show, flex some muscle? Can you fire some people? Until you can fire cabinet secretaries, until you can fire principal secretaries, until you can match your words with some actions, Kenyans will continue to be stranded at the, at the at, Kenyans will, be, will continue to be stranded at the margins of time and disparation because high talk Low action equals no action. So he needs to take firm and decisive action, send some people home. The DPP, the DPP should fight corruption in court, knowing that prosecution of offenses happens in the usual manner without this public rhetoric. If you don't have a watertight case, at least be honest. Come back and report to Kenyan. Don't sensationalize cases that you're handling in court, and then when you start messing the case in court, you don't, you're not careful to come and advise Kenyans the kind of struggles you're facing in court and you leave Kenyans wondering why is there no result? 
yet people were arrested and charged. Yo, someone once said the definition of insanity mm -hmm. is doing something over and over exactly. again, okay. expecting a different okay. result. So Kenyans okay. must reflect on those issues if you have to move forward. Steve Ogola, what a lawyer, what a man. Someone wants you to mentor him. Mm -hmm. General Mainge Gashini, mm -hmm. kindly link me to this great law, Kenyan lawyer yes. to mentor me on matters law. Ah. <laughs> we are not lost. Uh, let me tell Steve Ogola, always a pleasure to see you. Man. Mm. My Thank goodness, you. what a morning. Oh. This is what we call... Candid interviews with decision makers. Catch Jeff Koinange and Professor Hamo every day, Monday to Friday from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. only on Hot 96.